flares up all around his apartment complex. A social media group known as the Bird Bird Mafia pushed for these electronic billboards in Central Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Calling all units, A211 at 675 Main. Backup needed. Car 36 responding. Suspect wanted for question. The best thing you can do in Bridgeport when you get here is fucking immediately leave. Do not pass go, do not stop at a gas station, don't get off the exit, just fucking, fucking get on the gas and go. In two miles, use the second from the right lane to take the I-95 South, New Jersey Turnpike exit toward I-80 Garden State Parkway. Yeah, this is all, this is Jersey, New Jersey. You can see New York from over here. And New Jersey has rest stops and a highway. And at one point, for about 45 minutes, it just smells like wet German Shepherd hair, fuel, manure, a lot of nice milk. Is Vince Lombardi inside? Yes, that's a Vince Lombardi. Uh... But he's not inside, Vince. Like, you know, there are pictures and stuff like that. Hello. 
and I can't speak, so I use the system that I had to speak in to pay my speech. It's okay. It's Thank you so answer. much for your help today. No, no problem. I can't speak, so I use the system that I had to speak in to pay my speech. I don't, I don't fucking know right now, to be honest. Is Vince Lombardi actually here? Oh, I don't know his history. Okay, but he's not here. But is he here? Is he actually here? Was he actually here? No, is he here now? No, no, he's not. Okay. It says processing. Okay. okay, maybe it's the spirit of Vince Lombardi. There's nothing good in there. Get out while you still can, guys. I don't fucking know right now, to be honest. <laughs> the devil is dancing tonight. It is hot. No AC. Me neither. <laughs> Whoa! It's too hot. Help me. Help me. Help me. I'm dispersing too much energy. Ugh. The devil is dancing tonight, god damn it. Please, let me go. If I don't get fucking constant airflow, I could die. Get your ticket and get the fuck out of my state. You making big boy moves? Huh? You making big boy moves? Well, I'm trying not to kill people. Right now, these ones in my head, I got a pretty good idea right now. I'm trying to ignore them. Just a New York thing that nobody wants to talk. Did you know, Rax? That that's the only question I have. Did you did you ever interact with him? No. I didn't even know. I never saw him before I saw him on television. I don't go. I don't even go up that block. When I go out, I go out here and out. When I come back, I come. Never go up that block. I drove through the Bronx, that's about all I ever want to do.
So there's at least four cops here guarding the house, making sure people aren't lingering, even though there's still like some press waiting on the other block parked. But I asked the copy, I said, can I take pictures? He said, no. I said, what's the law on the sidewalk? Um, and if, you know, can I get as long as you keep moving, uh, they can't tell you otherwise. And he said the same thing. Yeah, go ahead, as long as you keep moving. So this is house there's nobody there and I'm gonna keep it moving but good evening everyone I hope you feel like you are traveling with me in that hot sticky humid vehicle eva you look wonderful as usual um that's it i mean i that's it for the show we got people dancing um i feel like our job is done how are you Eva? i'm great i'm happy you're home finally all is right in my world um i was dancing that's my jam that song brings back good memories um <laughs> I did feel like I was traveling with you, but that's because I've traveled with you. So all the uh, random outbursts, but that one, that, that was a good one. I was cracking up. <laughs> it was um, miserable on the way there. Miserable from most of the way back, but that, um, that ferry uh, from Jersey to Delaware, I believe that was absolutely needed and absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's like an hour and a half saved a lot of miles in gas. Um, but more importantly, I got to sit down and enjoy some cool air. And then as I got into about North Carolina, halfway through North Carolina, it started cooling down a lot. There were storms rolling through. So, um, it was fun to see the scene. Uh, I had business to do in Connecticut. Um, it was cool to stop at some places that I will always cherish. Typically that's associated with food, which is sad. Um, but I had a, I had a good trip. It was a short trip. It was uh, efficient in terms of work. I had to make a couple pit stops along the way at Starbucks to finish up the work and I still have work to do tomorrow, but, um, here we are. Um, we have some content, we have some aerial footage, we have Craig shouting at people. We have some updates on, uh, Steve and the situation there. Um, we're going to start with some news and then we will be right back. And while the news is going, we're going to get to the chats. Thank you everyone for joining. Here we go. The arrest of Rex Hewerman in connection with several of the Gilgo Beach killings has led to questions over the similarities between that case and others, including the one called the Eastbound Strangler. Please, can you shut the door? No, time to go. Please, this is what happened to me. A few years prior to the discovery of that first Gilgo Beach murder victim, four women were found strangled behind a motel that's outside of Atlantic City. 40, 43 the bayou. Some woman is knocking at my door. 
She says she's in danger. Investigators do say all four victims were female sex workers. It's the fact that the uh, the women were uh, particularly, you know, lined up uh, in a certain way. In 2006, the killer picks up these victims in a car from an area near the boardwalk. Drugs of choice are procured and they travel to the location. The killer strikes a strangle on her and then puts her body in the trunk of the car. A pattern that could only be established by a local who has intimate knowledge of all three important areas. Tierney's coming. Heads up. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so I think uh, we we have reached an end to uh, the search of the the Gilgo House. We're gonna we're gonna be pulling out shortly. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank members, uh, the men and women of the Suffolk County Crime Lab. That was very difficult, painstaking work uh, that they accomplished, and they did, a, they did a tremendous job. I also want to thank, of course, our partners with the Suffolk County Police Department, New York State Police, Suffolk County Sheriff's Office, and, and FBI, um, who, all of whom uh, participated in one, one way or the other uh, with regard to the, to the search. Um, you know, I really, I, other than that, I don't have any, uh, I don't have anything else to say, but I'm, I'm more than willing to take questions. Anybody yeah, have questions? Is there any indication that any woman was killed here in the house? So there's no, uh, I don't I believe at this time that we can say uh, one way or the other, either um, evidence, evidence does not point either one way or the other. Uh, I would, I would say that we, we have obtained a massive amount of, of, uh, material, which all of which has to be cataloged and and uh, analyzed, and it's going to take uh, quite some time. So, just a quick follow-up: If a victim's DNA turned up on material in the house, would that indicate perhaps that she was killed here? Um, so, I'm not going to talk about what ifs, but but with regard to what if anything was recovered, it's going to be. It's not uh, like TV. It's going to be a while for. The uh, the analysts to do their job. Now it goes from it goes from here to trace section and then to the, the if appropriate the DNA section. So that's a that's a process. Yesterday the police commissioner said that the search was fruitful. Can you elaborate on any of the potential evidence taken from here? I, th I think what he's referring to is uh, the amount of evidence, uh, which which is quite a lot, uh, and now it's up to the job of the task force uh, to go through that evidence. And we, you know we we that's a process. And we need to do we need to do that process, but uh, we won't know uh, exactly uh, what we have for for quite some time because just given the sheer volume of of uh, evidence that was 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 taken. I can tell you that uh, you know there were there was ground piercing. Uh, um, uh, you know, technology used in the backyard, uh, and uh, there uh, specifically there was there there was nothing uh, of note um, of taken from the backyard uh, as far as remains. Uh, you know, there are there is a, a whole entire trace analysis that has to has to we have to go through with the house uh, with regard to hair fibers, DNA, blood, uh, which you know we'll, we'll just have to await the results on. Um, the, it, the house in, in general was cluttered, uh, and there were a, a lot of, of guns uh, uh, taken from that, the, the, the house. The defendant had uh, 92 handgun permits. Uh, in addition to handguns, yeah, he had quite a few uh, long guns as well. Are there any other properties? Uh, with, there's a number of, of locations which, which we've searched, um, but we'll, you know, we'll, we'll keep that to, our, to ourselves for now. Okay, this has been entered into a national database. The suspect DNA likely was entered into a national database, state database. Is there any hit with any other unsolved case so far? So, um, you know, with regard to state and, and, and uh, a national D D uh, DNA databases, uh, there are specific rules with that well, um, under New York and, and federal law. Um, so, uh, you know, usually that only happens when you have a convicted 
a person is convicted of a crime. Um, so uh, as far as specifically the database, uh, his DNA has not been entered in that data. What, what, what among the evidence really jumps out? I mean, there's something that just stands out among all the rest. What, what stands out? You know, we're going to we're going we're going to to wait. I mean, I think everyone wanted that, that you know that 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 um, uh, singular piece of evidence. But uh, you know, we're going to wait until we 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 see all the evidence. But uh, I don't think there's anything one thing that really jumps out at us at, at this at this uh, juncture. I'm sorry. Is there any indication from the evidence of other victims? Um, you know, we're we're uh, our investigation, uh, you know, uh, uh, focused on uh, the Gilgo Four. Uh, we're we're going to continue to investigate that case uh, um, and um, uh, prepare that case for trial. And we have uh, our investigation now has become public, obviously. And uh, also, it's broadened. So we're going to look at at the other uh, instances where where bodies were recovered uh, in that area as well. Is the testing continuing on Maureen Bernard's barn, and who is conducting it, and what do you know? Is Investigation is continuing with regard to Maureen Brainerd Barnes, uh, as well as as uh, other aspects of the case, uh, and that's that's being done in the grand jury uh, or through the grand jury process. So I, I can't uh, talk about that is more that than that. It's being uh, the uh, the uh, there there is testing uh, going on with regard to uh, the hairs that were mentioned in the in the bail letter. Just to clarify, he's not convicted yet. He's not convicted yet. So to clarify, are you not allowed to put his DNA into the databases until after a conviction? Under New York State law, that's correct. Are you any closer to filing charges in that fourth case? We're working towards that, and uh, you know once uh, once we're. Uh, you know, once our investigation, that investigation is continuing. Can you tell us what else was found inside the vault besides guns? Anything leading to uh, belief of criminal activity inside? Uh, house, the house uh, w w could be categorized as cluttered. So, so there is a great, uh, a great deal of of, of uh, stuff uh, that was recovered. So we're just going to have to go through it. But it's it's uh, the, the list of, of items is is quite large. Inside the vault. I'm not going to specifically talk about uh, you know where everything was uh, what was recovered in, in the house until the, uh, the uh, all of the uh, the pictures and the uh, the reports have been gone over. Yeah, I need mean, to it, it it was a, a large enough area for people uh, people to enter, but uh, like the rest of the house, it was cluttered. It was a cluttered. It was. It was a. Uh, there was a lot of, um, you know, uh, of just you know boxes and, and and it was a very cluttered. I would say environment. DA, I need to clarify something, please. Because he's not convicted, can you not check his DNA against the six other people found along Ocean Parkway? I didn't say that. That's what I'm trying to clarify. Yeah. I, I, you asked me about the database. The okay. database is is national, and that has uh, that has uh, you know. I am not the, uh, the or, or the, the members of our task force are not uh, the guardians of that uh, database. Uh, but with what we can do with regard to our own investigation is, is completely different. So you can't one doesn't necessarily have to do with the other. If that makes sense. Yeah, I came in a little late. Were any human remains found? No. Uh, well, what I would say is we're still going over the trace evidence, but uh, you know they were asking about with regard to the excavation in the back if, if there were any large items of evidence recovered, and the answer to that question is no. What evidence in the backyard of these being burned? I'm sorry. You consider this home a crime scene or an alleged crime scene? Well, I think that the 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 so there was there was um, there was ground um, you know uh, technology that was able to see through the ground and there were a number of disturbances that were found in the ground um, you know uh, but until you dig it up you don't know what it is. What do you mean by a how do you? Like a disturbance could be like a like a uh, uh, like a, a cistern or or uh, you know a, a branch or, or yeah a bicycle uh, anything that's buried under the ground. Uh, you could see the, the impression of it, 
but you don't necessarily know what it is until you, you dig it up. And then where does the investigation stand with the number of sex workers who now say they were contacted by people? So uh, when we started our investigation, we did it through the grand jury. That that investigation was, uh, was uh, we wanted to maintain the... Uh, the secrecy of the grand jury investigation. Obviously, uh, that you know now that uh, there's been an arrest, it's become public. So we are in, uh, in interviewing a great many people. Is there a number more than here at this point? We're we're interviewing a great uh, great many great many people, but we're we're going to keep what our conversations, uh, what con what if any conversations we have with our witnesses between between us and the and and the witnesses. Do you feel like what the same witnesses are coming from? States. I'm sorry. Are these witnesses coming from different states? Uh, this I don't think that this this uh, investigation is limited to New York State. Certainly. Regarding the Chevy Avalanche, you have often spoken about March 14, 2022, as being the watershed moment. You were able to identify him as a suspect. There's been a lot of talk in the last 12 days about clues missed early on, like that this car wasn't looked at. I mean, can you explain why that might may have happened? So I think we laid it out um, um, pretty extensively in our bail letter, uh, you know, uh, for, for us. were uh, recovered in December of 2010. With regard to the phone evidence, uh, that work was done uh, and completed by the FBI in uh, early 2012. And, um, you know, and with regard to the avalanche, that information was, uh, was made available shortly after the, the, uh, the disappearance of Amber Costello. But again, when you look at everything, uh, you know that is uh, you know three three items that that are in and amongst thousands of of items so really talented investigators from a whole bunch of different agencies you use the resources of those agencies and you work uh, together uh, on a daily basis. But the people in this neighborhood who say it was more than a year, so March, March of 2022, you made a point of saying that in court. The people we interviewed in the neighborhood who say, well, okay, it was a year, more than a year, and, and he's living here all that time. What do you say to the residents? Well, I'm, I'm saying uh, to the residents that a 13 year old cold case doesn't get, get, get solved in, uh, in uh, you know, a matter of, of, of weeks or days. Um, you know the the uh, the um, DNA evidence in and of itself was was a very you know lengthy arduous process, uh, which required the, the the cooperation of a number of agencies, uh, and unfortunately uh, these things take time. Also, the grand jury process in uh, New York State, in order to charge somebody, you you need to go you need to charge them, and you need to you know in a case of of this nature, with the the different. Specifically, say where where any one item of evidence was found in the house. Were guns returned to the home today? Uh, no guns were returned to the home. To, to my knowledge, we we all of the guns that were recovered. And we're talking about two hundred eighty-three, about two about approximately two hundred seventy-nine um, uh, weapons were, were recovered. Uh, you know, they they're being categorized. Some may not categ you know, some may not be complete weapons. Some may not uh, be able to be defined as a weapon under New York State. Uh, weapons found. So uh, we we uh, informed uh, the family. Obviously, uh, they, they're represented by, represented by counsel. So we've spoken uh, to counsel. And they intend to uh, that would be, would they be allowed to? that would be a question for for their counsel. And, and they be allowed to? At, once once the um, once the the um, 
once we're, we're we, you know, we've withdrawn. So. of the three latter murders of um, um, Melissa Bartholomew, um, um, Megan Waterman, and Amber Costello. They specifically were out of the state and traveling uh, during the time of those three victims' disappearance. What struck you as circumstantially interesting or, or bizarre or about the stuff that you dug up or the house itself? I mean, what, what stood out to you about this that, that might, you know, in, in a sense, reveal deal in like feelings or you know for a lot of information so what we're going to do now is what we've been doing all along is we're going to work with our partners we're going to go through that that material and, and we're going to see uh, uh, what if any way it fits into the case uh, about how many pieces of oh god it's a it's a it's a tremendous amount of information that was uh, that that was I, I'll say this a tremendous amount of information that was derived in conjunction with the search searches incident to arrest I'm sorry. Is there anything pertinent found in the storage unit? Um, again, we're going once we, uh, we 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 complete the process. We're going to, um, uh, you know, we're going to have uh, further word with uh, with regard to that. But what you have to understand is we were looking for you know tangible items of evidence as well as trace evidence, including blood and DNA and uh, hair fibers and the like. And when you talk about something like that, that is a process that uh, it takes a while uh, to for that for that process to to be analyzed. Uh, by by the experts, so that's going to take a while. We haven't ruled in or ruled out anything okay. with regard to that. Did okay, you find so, any so trophy? That means that maybe there was human remains or something in the house. Since everything is so clear, maybe there was some blood droppings. Well, as as I said, that we we look for trace evidence. Um, and you know that uh, we have you know that is a process that is a scientific process that is done in a lab and we just haven't had the time to do to, to go through that process so it's just it's incomplete so you know you can't uh, you can't say anything more than it's incomplete we're talking I'm specifically talking about what, what would you know what would commonly be referred to as, 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 a, as a firearm um, no, and and, in, uh, and the only reason why I, I sort of hedge with that is because under New York State law, like a black powder, what what other, uh, what the public would say that's a gun. Well, under New York State law, that's not that might not necessarily qualify as a, as a weapon, or under federal law certainly. I have uh, I have nothing uh, to to provide with regard to to the brothers' house in South Carolina. Uh, I'm not. I have no information. I uh, I have. Uh, no comment with regard to what's going on in South Carolina. Are it's not my jurisdiction. Are are we are, we are, we are, uh, for all intents and purposes. Going to, to do it, uh, withdraw at a time that they, they deem appropriate, but, uh, you know, as far as the search of the house, uh, for all intents, we're not, I'm not going to get into uh, the specifics with regard to the search. Any but we, we were looking for trace evidence. Is that for August 1st? I'm sorry? Is that what we can expect to remain for next, August 1st? Correct. Um, you know, not. Uh, we're going to be. You know, that that's just the, the first uh, conference after the uh, um, uh, the uh, arraignment. So, uh, just a, a you know typical court conference. We're going to talk about discovery, uh, providing the voluminous discovery in this case. That process is going to st start. Um, you know, uh, as a matter of right, defendant has a right to a bail hearing. So, uh, we'll see what happens with regard to that. Has any evidence you discovered at the house led you to a theory on the matter of death? Um, other than what we've said at the time of arraignment, no. And uh, the cause of death with regard to the three uh, victims is, uh, has been categorized as homicidal violence. Did you find any trophies? You had spoken about potentially looking mm -hmm. for trophies. We're not going to specifically talk about uh, uh, specific items of evidence until everything's been um, 
cataloged and, and gone over. I, as we said, there, there is quite a lot of stuff. Would anything discovered at the property lead your agent to feel uh, emotionally moved or psychologically, um, you know, um, You know, I think that uh, we have a job to do, uh, and, uh, you know, we're, we're also human beings, but, um, you know, I, I think that uh, I would commend uh, all of uh, all of the examiners for their professionalism. Um, I think we have to let the process work out. Um, so you know we don't we don't announce our searches before we do them. So uh, we just can't make a comment as to you know specific areas, uh, if any, to be searched. All right. It was uh, it was big enough to walk into, and it was in the basement. Thank okay. You. Okay. Thanks, guys. It was a lot of information. Um, my first take at this uh, while I was live, um, all the press and media had microphones in front um, and I didn't have the equipment. So uh, I was able to sync it up from that uh, with my footage and hopefully that helped. I know we were having some technical difficulties. Um, we had a couple of streaming issues, but uh, that should be resolved. I see my connection is back um, to full signal. Um, Eva, I'm going to play the aerial Why footage here. Oh, that's not the aerial footage. Um, I'm going to play the aerial footage here. Um, as we have a discussion, I know we have a lot to discuss. Um, I know you um, were going to focus on the victims, and at any time you need to pause this, uh, you can either pause it or I can um, to put up that information. Um, you know, I, I, I expected more uh, at the press conference, but um, you heard them, you know, no remains, but they still have to uh, swab stuff for trace DNA and stuff that they took out of there. Um, this was the scene, what you're seeing on screen is the scene um, from the morning that I pulled up, which would have been Tuesday, right? Tuesday morning, Eva? Yes, this was Tuesday morning. Um, yeah, it was. so I was watching that while you were out there, you and your uh, flaccid gimbal. <laughs> um, but I'm really, you know, at first, I was really surprised. I feel like once they started digging, I thought for sure, okay, they, you know, they know why they're digging out there. They're digging for something. I thought for sure that remains were going to be found. I thought that's what was going to be announced. But at the same time, you know, I started thinking about it later. They really don't know. And especially at that press conference, they were just wrapping up that day. They don't even know what they've really found. You know, he, he kind of said that, you know, everything has to be processed. Everything has to be tested. They might have traces of remains. Um, maybe, maybe they're going to test the dirt. They might find hair. They might find, you know, clothing that might have been processed that might not belong to anybody in the house, but maybe to a potential victim. Um, so they don't really know all of what they found. It sounds like they took a multitude of things out of that house. I mean, for them to be there, they were they were there almost a week. They were there a full week. Um, you know, taking stuff out of that house down to digging in the dirt with an excavator. Um, they've they've definitely found something. We just don't know what yet. Yeah, the GPR, which is that ground penetrating radar, uh, out with a K nine the day before or, or the day of uh, they started digging with that excavator. So. Uh, it's implied that they got a hit. Uh, he even uh, alludes to that in, in his press conference that, that they had to have, right? Um, they did not find remains there. There was speculation around this room. Uh, you know, the, the press really made it out to be this uh, this horror show room, right? Um, but he said, look, there was guns in there. Um, and it's not, you know, you heard the press lady ask, was there a mattress found in there? Uh, he wouldn't answer, but... Um, you know, I think it, it speaks volumes for all the people that jumped on the wife and said, look how, you know, as soon as the digging started, people started on, on the Facebook and social media. Um, how could this woman, you know, be in this house and know about or not know about uh, what was occurring here um, if he was digging in the backyard? And turns out um, nothing obvious was was found there. So how would she know? Um, I want to you know say this again. I've said this on Twitter. Leave this poor woman alone. Um, I, you know, her and the kids have nothing to do with this, I don't think. And obviously 
you know, if something comes out where um, it needs to be told or there's data sets that need to be conveyed, it'll get done. But taking photographs or videos of her at this point, um, I, I don't feel like that's appropriate. I agree completely. Um, I, I'm I'm disgusted that the media has even put her face, her children's faces out there. This is like the absolute worst and most vulnerable time of somebody's life. Um, you know, I know that there are families of the victims of this person that are out there and they're having to process all of this. At the same time, they've also had over 10 years to, you know, grieve a little and process a lot. And I'm sure that, you know, finding out this information and having an arrest um, is ripping open old wounds. But this woman and her children literally just found out at the same time that we did that they were living with a serial killer. And, you know, a lot of us, I think a lot of people here, we all follow Carrie Rawson on Twitter. And, you know, she's very candid about her life and um, speaks open and honestly about it. And tries to convey, you know, how fucked up that really is. Like finding out something like that, thinking that this person that's your husband, your dad, that's just, you know, a normal person in your life, to find out something of this magnitude about him, it's it's something that we can't even grasp and comprehend, even with somebody trying to explain it to us. And if any there's any time that, you know, the media should absolutely leave somebody alone, at least for a little while, you know, at least give them a few weeks to process this. Um, I think now, now would be the time with these people in particular. Uh, even I think she mentioned GoFundMe. Um, I mean, I, I can imagine the financial burden of something like this, uh, where you had a sole provider, right? I, I don't know that she was working. Um, I don't have any information in front of me that, that shows she was. Uh, a sole provider has been ripped out of this family's life not only ripped out, uh, ripped out under these circumstances um, with international attention on them um, with no real way to maintain their livelihood. Um, and it wasn't a, it didn't look, I mean, you look at those houses around the area. Um, these were, you know, this area um, I rarely go to, um, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. This is where you want to live like Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, if you have to work in the city or around the city, um, this is where you'd want to be. Um, and so you can imagine the type of people, I mean, you know, take Rex as a perfect example of someone who took the train right into uh, Midtown. Um, so a lot of people like that, you can see these houses, well manicured lawns, you see, um, you know, everything's pristine. And then you have this house, which is like an eyesore um, in the middle of this neighborhood. It's just, it's interesting. Um, but with that said, it's probably, I mean, it's an eyesore for us, but it's a home for uh, this woman and her kids. Uh, it's been a home for uh, them for quite some time, um, although they'll probably not want to be there. Um, personally, I, I feel like that, that, that'd be the choice I'd want to make, but I don't know if that's a choice that she's going to make. And uh, Joe Joe points out the very expensive neighborhood. You're going to see some beach pictures. You're going to see why. Um, this is only 20 minutes away from Jones Beach, Gigolo Beach, Gilgo Beach. Um, I, I get the two mixed up all the time. I'm dyslexic, but it's a beautiful area. I mean, I it, it's just it's serene. Um, you're going to see drone footage of that area, but this is 20 minutes from that. And, you know, people had speculated perhaps that he was able to look over the bay. Uh, I believe it's a bay uh, with his binoculars, um, you know, to where the victims were found. And I'm going to, I'm going to call bullshit on that. It's, it's nearly impossible because those houses sit on uh, one side and then the other side's a reserve where you can't build, uh, or if you can, it's very limited. So, um, he'd have to walk onto someone's house, uh, waterfront property to be able to take binoculars, even if the binoculars were to reach that far, um, it'd be very, very complicated and he'd get caught. So, uh, but you're going to see footage of that. You're going to see some aerial footage of Atlantic city. Um, you know, I found it interesting in driving out there. Um, you know, the, the money problems that he has, we're talking about the GoFundMe right now. Um, and I can imagine that Atlantic city would be a desirable place to go. Uh, to gamble some money if you're running low. And, and certainly the picture that's painted so far uh, with these, you know, these lawsuits and all this other stuff that was going on. Um, it's plausible, right? Right, Eva? I mean, Atlantic City wasn't a far drive. I think so. Um, I was actually, when I was reading uh, an article earlier, that's what somebody was 
you know, that's what the speculation was. The We found out that he uh, has a timeshare in Las Vegas. Um, and we'll show you here in a minute, but there's, you know, the po connections to Atlantic City, um, possible sightings of him by um, sex workers there. And, you know, it makes you wonder, is he attracted to the gambling or is he attracted to the sex work? Or is it both? Was he a gambler? Um, we know that he was a little bit of a heavy drinker. So, um, you know, maybe he just had all the vices together. Maybe it was the gambling, the sex workers and, you know, the drinking all the way around. Um, but yeah, it's not far. And uh, that's a little bit what we go into tonight. I'm talking about the Eastbound Strangler. Is there a connection here or is it just really awful coincidence? Yeah, all, all sex workers, right? Um, you know, as I researched this, uh, I, I've been upfront with people. Uh, this case that we're talking about um, is not one that I followed from the get-go. Um, but um, when I researched, I tried to do it um, well. And looking at this, so first of all, they're all sex workers, right? Um, there's an actual profile page if folks want to look at it, stock. Um, and it's a group of retired law enforcement profilers who make these profile profiles on uh, folks that haven't been caught potential serial killers uh, and it's led up by an actual addict um, I found that interesting um, and then I started reading into some attributes of serial killers and I know I'm not Kerry Rawson but I do have chat GPT and um, you know the first first thing that it outlines is childhood trauma um, many serial killers have experienced severe abuse neglect trauma during their formative years um, that contributes to the development of psychological issues and violent tendencies. Number two is early signs of cruelty, um, something we're all probably familiar with, um, the animal anecdote. Um, but serial killers may exhibit disturbing behaviors during childhood, such as cruelty to animals, bedwetting uh, beyond the normal age and starting fires. Number three is lack of empathy and remorse. Um, serial killers often demonstrate a profound lack of empathy for their victims, showing, showing them remorse for their actions, antisocial personality traits. Um, and, and this is a big one, number five, because this ties into this case, is fantasy-driven behavior. Um, you, serial killers may have elaborate fantasies involving violence, power, and control over others. Uh, these fantasies can be a driving force behind their actions. Narcissism, uh, Jennifer Coffin-Dabber's favorite word. Uh, and we're going to talk about Papa Roger at the end here, because we have some sort of breaking news on that one, but um, difficulty forming meaningful relationships. Um, you know, we, we've heard some information from the media. Um, we, I'd really like to hear from Asa herself, herself, but now's not the time. Um, but sort of this boundary between Rex and his wife. And um, they didn't, you know, if they, even if they were to spend time together, it was separate. Um, so that's interesting. Their escalation of violence, serial killers may start with less severe crimes. Um, progressively escalate to more violent acts, compulsion, and ritualistic behavior. Um, compulsion is a big part of gambling. Yeah, Eva? I mean, <laughs> I'm not a gambler, but um, yeah, I mean, well, I, I think that ties into any of those things. I, I mean, it it, it kind of goes hand in hand, right? Uh -huh. Um, sorry, I was reading, but you can see here police were wrapping up. Um, I'm going to fast forward a little bit to them. They're taking some items from the sort of in the backyard, look like they're cleaning up. It looks like they may have set up something under that tree where media couldn't look. There were a couple other drones here at the scene, um, but you guys can see it for yourself as it uh, happens here on the screen. And I'm going to upload this in 4K after the live, because right now what everyone is seeing is 1080. So, um, couple more characteristics, charm and manipulation. Uh, many serial killers are skilled at charming and manipulating others, uh, which can help them gain victims' trust. Uh, intelligent and organized. I find this one interesting because neither one of these brothers um, is that. Um, maybe intelligent, but not organized. Um, and then the last one is uh, paraphilias or sexual deviants. Um, and this ties into the escorts. Um, do you want to tell us a little about the victims here, Eva? Yeah, so, well, I, I really dug into the eastbound Stringler victims today, but we have um, Maureen uh, Brainerd-Barnes, uh, Megan Waterman, 
Ooh, I'm drawing a blank on the other two. I'm terrible. <laughs> um, all of these women, I mean, and uh, Shannon Gilbert, um, though she's not tied as a victim to this, that she's kind of how um, all, all of these victims. Gonna, Joe's, Joe's going to name them. Uh, how I know you focused <laughs> on the eastbound stranglers. That's what I was actually talking about. But um, I want to take a moment because this is about the victim. So. Let's get those names right. Let's get them memorized and let's make sure that we all know them. So um, we have Amber Costello um, and I'll let Joe fill in the rest and then we'll get to the, we can sort of talk about Atlantic City once we get to the, the, the footage, I think. Yes, uh, Melissa Bartholomew, there we go. Amber Costello, uh, Megan Waterman, and then Maureen Brainerd Barnes. Um, Shannon Gilbert, um, another victim that's tied to this, even though the, she's not tied as a victim um, uh, from the Long Island Sealer Killer. She was the reason that um, all of these victims were found. Um, something I'm still scratching my head about is when are we going to know if he is or is not tied to all the other bodies that were found along Gilgo Beach? That really hasn't been mentioned um, you know, and I know that, you know, this arrest is new and now they have even more stuff to look at and they have stuff from his house to process now. But I feel like that's getting lost in the mix. I feel like nobody's talking about, OK, like we know that he's charged for these specific ones, but we have all these other bodies that were found along this beach in the same area. Is it tied? Is it not tied? Is this just a dumping ground? I know that's like the million dollar question, but that's like something that I'm, I've been stuck on in my head. Yeah. I, you know, I, in talking or trying to talk to people uh, in the neighborhood, they were reluctant. Um, they were more concerned with things like how fast people were driving on the street and the helicopters making noise. And when will the people leave? Um, and I get the sense that it's probably been a problem from the beginning and, and, and probably a huge frustration for the people following this case since the beginning um, is that these aren't your typical victims, right? They're sex workers. And so it seems like a lot of locals even shrug it off as, okay, well, you know, and I'm like, well, aren't you interested to know if they found remains or nah, you know, we just want this over with. And I, you know, that's, I don't know. Um, there's a little New York, um, you know, attitude that's that's mixed into that, I want to say. Um, that's just natural being in New York, but, you know, the dismissiveness. But um, these are lives that have lost, and you point out um, other lives that have been lost. And, you know, it, it makes me wonder, you know, they found the wife's hair on the three that they've tied him to, right? Or, um, you know, was he just getting better? Was he getting more careful throughout the years um, as he went on? And I think we've asked the question, did he just stop? um doesn't feel like he did but you know it's a, it's it's a possibility um so i i don't know um you know it was here this footage here you start seeing um you know the cops come out and um they start shaking their hand and the da is out here and i could sort of tell by the body i you know they at the press conference they they speak and they don't say a lot or they they're careful about how they word it but I could tell they were looking for that, that, that damning evidence too, right? They weren't there for a week with the excavators and the dogs and the GPR um, because they too, because that, that would, that would make their case. Um, that would make things a lot easier. Um, so I could tell from the body language here when they came out and they're shaking hand that it probably didn't go the way that they wanted either. But um, that was my take. And, you know, you guys all heard the press conference. I don't know. Um, you know, I, I, I think people have pointed out that he's due a fair trial. Um, there's some stuff here that's been exaggerated already uh, on both sides, both here in New York and South Carolina. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, Eva, do you have any uh, slides or pictures that you want to show uh, while I pause this? Um, yes, no, maybe. I do. So, <laughs> um, we'll hop on over to Atlantic City, kind of. Um, these, these are the victims we're talking about. So these are the eastbound strangler victims. Um, we've got Kim Raffel, Barbara Brader. I hope I don't mess that name up. Brader, Brader. 
um, Molly Diltz and Tracy Roberts. And, you know, where the connection is, is that these were all sex workers. Um, they were all found um, right here. You can see they were found in a drainage ditch behind the Golden Key Motel. This was November 20th, um, 2006. And they were found by two women that were out walking a dog. Uh, they found one body. The police came. They found the other ones. Um, all dumped with fully clothed but no shoes on, which really, that, that kind of stands out to me. Um, none of them had shoes. They were all barefoot. Um, they were all placed in the water and had been there for about a, one. Kim Rock was seen alive the day before the bodies were found. So she was there not very long. The other bodies were very badly decomposed. Um, there between a month and two months. Um, you know, your first thought is that, you know, this isn't far, like you said, so it's got to be connected. They're sex workers. Um, it, it seems like the same MO, you know, it's, you know, the two areas I told you are different, um, perhaps similar. Um, one main thing that you miss is that they were all found facing east, um, which is interesting because that could fit a profile of someone that's OCD. Um, you know, I immediately thought of um, Islam, you know, uh, Muslims, uh, when they pray five times a day, they face east. Uh, I don't know. Um, if there's a connection here, I do want to show the footage of Atlantic City um, and any footage that I'm skipping or fast forwarding here. Uh, you'll see in 4K in a little bit. Let me just add this back. Eva, could you remove that overlay? Thank you. Okay. So this was the police wrapping it up. Um, I don't want to fast forward. You saw that's the media and press gathered outside. Uh, I got some close-up angles there of DA and police. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. This is where I want to stop because. Okay. Okay. This is uh, Gilgo Beach. This, so as a drone lifts up, you're looking at... Uh, Rex's home. So way over yonder over the water where those white little buildings are, um, are the waterfront properties. And Rex's house is on I believe First Avenue, if I remember correctly. And um, so it's well beyond that, that coastline or waterfront property line. Um, I started, I believe from, yeah. So I started from the actual parking lot of Gilgo Beach. Teenagers were nice enough not to charge me because I told them I was flying a drone, not going to the beach. Um, and I'm heading over to that spot there. Um, and Joe can confirm, um, but that spot there in between the highway uh, where it sort of uh, starts splitting apart um, is the area where uh, the four victims were found. Now, I want maybe Joe to confirm if all the other victims were found in the same stretch. So um, I'll continue letting it play. I'm going to hop over to the comments right quick. Um, and if folks have questions on this area, um, let me know. I, I tried to learn as much about it. There's an amphitheater down the road. You'll see some footage of that. Thank you, Joe. Um, and so th it's a beautiful area. Uh, there's these obstacle courses at the beginning uh, where these kids are sort of um, doing obstacles near the beach. It's just a beautiful area. You don't, I mean, you, you go around um, New York City and all of a sudden you're here um, and it, it doesn't, it feels like you're so far away from the city. Um, it's pretty remarkable. Um, you know, there's something that struck me when speaking to the Petito family, Eva, in that um, they took comfort in knowing Gabby's resting spot was in a beautiful uh, area of Wyoming. Um, and I would hope the victim's family takes comfort in knowing this is a beautiful area. If I were to pass away and be buried, this is where I'd want to be. Um, it's a it's a gorgeous area. I know it's the conditions are not ideal, but um, you try to take the positive. But um, so this is a stretch here and you know it's quiet when you're comparing it to atlantic city um atlantic city once you get to that west side over there it's not, actually not atlantic city i'll get you the the name um i have it written down it's some oak something i don't know 
um, Egg Harbor, Egg Oak, three words, but Egg Harbor. So it's the west side of Atlantic City. And there's a lot of traffic and people noted that's not the kind of hotel that you'd want to stay at. No, it's not. Um, and I don't even know if that hotel is still standing um, there. They've demolished so much there. Atlantic City has really uh, turned to a shithole. Um, it's always been a city of sin and tourism. Um, there's not much tour tourism um, from what I could see when there. I've been there before, I think three years ago, four years ago. I don't know. Um, this, this though, um, Long Island, Jones Beach was just absolutely gorgeous. I wish it was a little cooler, but nonetheless. I know you wanted everything to be a little cooler on this trip. <laughs> I have never been so cranky and pissed at myself. And the only, I told one guy who had his window down, the only person I could be pissed at was myself. Uh, we knew going in. You said it's going to be hot. I said, yeah, not a problem. I'll plan the drive. And I did mostly like the, the night driving, but I didn't plan it so well. Um, I did folks, ask. <laughs> hope folks can get a sense of the area, just how beautiful. But um, this is midday. You can see this stretch of road. There's maybe one car off in the distance. Uh, this is, you know, um, and then we'll go to Atlantic City. Ugh. I'm going to throw this up here really quick. Everybody was asking, just give you a little bit of an idea on Gilgo Beach, where the bodies were found. That big building is where I took off from with that parking lot there. I mean, that's a lot. That's a, that's not just a few bodies. That's a lot of bodies in a condensed area. So if they're not all tied to one person, how many people are out here dumping bodies? And I, I, I don't know. I feel like this should be talked about more, but it's really not. I mean, it's you could really get into a conspiracy rabbit hole with this case because there's people that believe that there's law enforcement involved. There's people that believe there's higher ups that are involved. I mean, you go on TikTok and you can see for yourself, um, it's it's chaotic um but you're right I, I mean anywhere else i think that people would have been screaming it, and it's not like this happened in 1999 or 1980 right this isn't that cold of a case this happened in 2010 i mean in 2011 i was just ramping up for my divorce it, it, it's not that you know it, it's 13 years ago but still um to find that many bodies in one stretch of like area like this especially what joe and i have described it's you know it, it's a nice area You'd imagine people would be happy that police were th were there you know, searching for days, and um, but it seems to be the opposite. Um, I want to take that overlay off and skip right over to Atlantic City because we're coming up on the hour. This is still Gilgo Beach. You see that tower over there? That's where the obstacle courses were. There's an amphitheater over there on the left. Just really, really pretty. It does look really beautiful. I'm actually a little... Jealous. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of the whole trip, but that looks, that looks very pretty. This is the bridge that he'd have to drive over um, from his home to get to the beach. So you go over this beach, you take a light, there's a roundabout. Um, but yeah, it, it is. Um, and then this is Atlantic City. Ugh. Um, <laughs> so this is the stretch of land. You can see how much has been demolished, these parking lots. Um, and when I said it's it's very different and very similar, I guess in the mind of uh, someone who's OCD, uh, autistic, someone who's linear thinking or likes things linear, um, you're in between two pieces of water, right? Um, they were found in a sewer drain off to the right, um, and you have the ocean off to the left. And I think that the same could be said for Long Island or Gilgo Beach, where they found, right? There's a long stretch, um, and it's in between two bodies of water, but not much more uh is similar here um this is a very you can see how many cars are going by um compared to the previous aerial footage um you know people are going into atlantic city uh via this route but on the other hand this is a very underserved part of west atlantic city uh egg harbor um poverty um there is some new development there you see that sign is uh, the spot over there um you see some development right there, but that's new development. Um, this has been a shithole for quite some time. 
I don't know. Um, you know, I, I don't think that the Gilgo victims were facing East. I don't, I've never heard of that. Maybe, maybe they were, maybe Joe can fill us in with some, some, um, some of that stuff, but um, why have four victims here facing East and, and not the three that he's been charged with over in New York? Um, I don't know. Uh, that's what I was saying. I, I'm really, I'm perplexed on this one because it does seem like, you know, there could be a connection, but then at the same time, um, actually I found this really interesting and <laughs> Joe's in here tonight. So we'll throw this up here. Um, you know, it says while the area is more developed, uh, for one, uh, while similarity situated along similarly situated along Marshman, the neighborhood is nowhere near as remote as Gilgo beach and the Atlantic city killer may have done more to cover his tracks. Um, Victims may have been placed face down in the water in an effort to wash away DNA, said Joe Jackalone, um, everybody's favorite retired NYPD sergeant. Um, I believe the difference between the person involved in Jersey is he took steps to get rid of DNA evidence. The guy in Bil Gilgo Beach um, didn't care because he knew they wouldn't be found. And by the time they did, basically the evidence was going to be gone anyways. So then this brought me back to, okay, well, you know, that makes sense. So it's, you know, then it's not the same guy. Uh, in, I mean, in either case, I don't think we have besides a profile, um, which I want to read off a little bit, uh, what, what this group stock believes the profile for Atlantic city is. Um, they say it's a local male who's very familiar with the Atlantic city area, uh, and the disposal site of the victims. He has a very organized personality, uh, which influences his personal and everyday activities, including his work. He is very rigid and structured in his everyday life. A place for everything and everything in its place would be its motto. He has read and reads book on serial killers and he has some knowledge of crime scenes and crime investigations. He has an extreme foot fetish and has a collection of women's shoes and the shoes of his victims. He has not killed every prostitute he has come in contact with. There are prostitutes who know him for the sexual gratification he gets from their feet. He is non-social and likes to keep to himself. He is a narcissist. Everything evolves around him, and he's also very concerned with making himself look good in all aspects. He's also extremely opinionated. If criticized or disagreed with, he would become extremely angry or agitated, although at times when he wants to be, he can be very charming. In his pre-offense mode, he may have spoken about the sinful nature of prostitution, or he may have voiced economic concerns about prostitutes destroying at Lady City value or reputation. In his post-offense mode, he would say things like, they got what they deserved or good riddance. He follows the news of his killings in the media, which, you know, um, police point out Rex was doing. Um, his hobbies would include art and photography, and his obsessive fantasies would compel him to search for sexually graphic and or violent pictures in all media. He probably has a prior record of sexual or physical abuse or sexual harassment towards women. So uh, a little bit from stock. This is the group led up by an addict, uh, law enforcement, ex-law enforcement and profilers. Um, interesting stuff. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, hopefully we can get the quote uh, from Asa that I do have a short clip of her um, because she made a clip about, you know, it was depressing enough um, or something along those lines. So I want to pull that up even while you take the mic. Uh, let me pull that video. The foot fetish thing definitely makes sense to me. And that was the, that was what I was saying earlier. I found it very interesting that they were all um, found without shoes. And that was, that was the first place that my mind went was either had a foot fetish or that was the trophy that he kept. But foot fetish definitely makes sense. No, well, I'm sorry. We just don't.
had to do some, I mean, you know, because we are obviously talking about Austin leaving her alone. I've had to do some internal soul searching about Craig and uh, what I did out there, um, flying the drone and, um, you know, interviewing people. And you know, I don't see it as the same. Um, maybe people, uh, um, you know, feel free to chime in. Um, but this is, you know, Craig has been charged with killing a police officer. Uh, he's been described as violent towards neighbors. Um, several neighbors are reported the same. Um, so I feel like there's data sets there that should be explored. Um, also, I feel complete opposite. But, um, you know, I was traveling. It was hot and sweaty. I think it was, where was I? Virginia Beach. So when I got to Virginia Beach, I did that stream with you, um, Eva, and uh, publicly buzzed, uh, shaving a J. Um, and I was tired. So and I was already running late to that. And at like 1230, I got a text from Steve. And I guess... He had been going through some of the comments on YouTube, perhaps, um, which is a horrible idea. Um, and I always say that, but people that don't have a, a following, um, you know, when people start commenting and you're not used to that, you can get really caught up in that. And so I, I sort of just I breezed by it um, and it's just gotten steadily worse to a point where I actually said, just stop communicating with me. Um, I can't control other people's comments. I can't control other people's perspective. Um, you know, there's one thing that my sponsor, uh, Bill, uh, before it was passed on and, and he, he passed away, he would always say, did you lie? And did you, did you, uh, mean to cause ill intent or harm? And I can walk away from, from this saying, no, I didn't. And I'm sorry that, um, you know, locals may think of you differently. Um, but I just, I don't feel like anything was done wrong there. And I, I don't know. I, I don't have time for bullshit. Um, I, you know, I, I love the guy. Um, I can, I can certainly understand what he's going through and what he probably will go through. Craig is the only person that we really know of besides Asa, right? That has a connection to a serial killer. Um, and I, on the same token, I got in and I got out and I didn't linger. Um, so it is what it is. I, I don't know. Eva, your thoughts. Well, it makes me sad. Cause you know, I said, um, I love Steve so much. I want to be like him when I grow up. Um, he's an amazing guy. Um, and I think um, it's a, uh, I think there may be a lot of stress in that neighborhood. And it was something that I was really worried about. And, you know, we kind of, we actually, before we had him on, we explained that to him on the phone. We're like, look, it's, if you think it's crazy today, it's only going to get crazier. And, you know, he kind of joked and said, well, you know, no, I'm liking, liking watching everything go on. But um, I knew that I really meant that when I said that to him, because we've, we've seen this up close. We've seen when the media swarms on something or on someone's house and it is, it's, it's a whole circus. Um, and it's, it's an invasion of privacy, even for the neighbors too, you know, because now everybody wants to talk to them and, um, th their comments are being put out in the news. Um, and then you top that off with, there is, there's a comment section on everything. You go to a mainstream media website, you come here to YouTube, you go to Twitter, you can, you can read comments everywhere. We don't read the comments. <laughs> you do. You go. You'll uh, like a few of the positive ones. I stopped reading comments on YouTube when somebody said my voice was annoying because I knew that if I continued reading, I would never get on here and do this again. Um, and it is. It's it's very frustrating. And to feel like maybe something you've said or, um, you know, your opinions to be twisted around. Uh, I can understand what he's going through is very tough and his neighbors as well. My heart goes out to them. Um, but I know, like you said, you had absolutely no ill intention here. I'm very proud of you. Um, you maintained your integrity, integrity throughout the entire thing. So whatever is going to happen is going to happen. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I like to, I, I like him a lot. I just, I don't, I don't, I, I felt like I, I went to bed and woke up like I had done something wrong. Maybe I did. I don't know. But I felt like I did. Um, you know, I, I, I asked him for the interview. He said he was. And I think you and I spoke like, I don't think that people that saw my video, right? I have 8,000 followers on YouTube. Like, I would worry more about you going on News Nation like you did. And that goes out to everyone, like the entire world, and or at least the United States. And so, I don't know. But um, on, the, on the same 
token, they do have viable fears. Uh, him and the neighbors, you know, Craig has been acting out of pocket. Uh, I'm going to share a clip of Craig screaming from afar. Uh, here. Uh, that's from that's picking up from where it is all the way at the house which you guys have seen <laughs> he's laughing like a loony and he's calling him a yeah a sucker so um i had to beep it out so i mean they have fears and um on the same token like i i read in between the lines too that's the other thing is that the other neighbor dropped into the youtube video um and I put it out on Twitter. I put out I put out all the data and facts, right? I'm not I'm not trying to skew the data. Um, I put out the data and said, look, here's another neighbor, the same neighbor that spoke up, saying he saw Craig. Uh, he looks like a broken man. Um, you know, someone that was taking a different perspective. And, and I was trying to give all of that to you guys. Um, so I don't know. Um, we have some other interesting stuff going on in the world. We're going to wrap it up because we're coming up on the hour. Um, in the ocean off West 22nd staff. Street well into the evening. The red flags, however, up all day long. A permanent sign also warning people to stay out of the water as there is a strong current and sudden drop-offs. No lifeguards are assigned to this part of the beach. Sadly, the effort to cool down ending in a frantic search for a 15-year-old boy. He and his 14-year-old brother went into in for a swim around noon Thursday. Witnesses telling PIX11 News the boys got stuck in a riptide. Their mother screaming and alerting beachgoers who then dove in to help. When I tried to get him, he already went under. I tried, you know, I got so close, but so bad. The 14-year-old identified by family as Aaron Aristus was pulled to safety, but his 15-year-old brother Markle could not be found. Air 11 overhead as first responders scoured the water off West 22nd Street. NYPD and FDNY divers searching for hours, but Markle was not found. His aunt asked him. And we're in the middle of a heat wave. And, and why is the lifeguards? This is sad. Uh, Coney Island, uh, New York. And, you know, it's this time of year, every year, um, people unfortunately uh, mistake the power of Mother Nature. Um, but this is sad because this is his brother. Uh, they were swimming together. Um, respect Mother Nature. Um, there was another one that Jess was telling me about, uh, I believe a Connecticut boy in Rhode Island or I have the, the opposite way. But uh, another one was unfolding as I was leaving that area. Uh, we have rain in, in China, some crazy weather there. Uh, which everyone knows is occurring all over the world. And then this one is terrifying, Eva. Hey, they got to pull the plug. There's no plug. This is footage showing the moment they got amusement stuck park riders on this left thing spinning for, in reverse for 10 minutes after a ride minutes, functioned and the emergency brake failed. Check this out. Riders it's the music apparently Express from the same company that made the other one in South Carolina where that roller coaster, the, the foundation cracked. So they're they're tied somehow, whether it's the company that makes them or the the organization that owns them both. Um, but yeah, so these people were just stuck going backwards for ten minutes glitch, and they couldn't leaving stop them it. Temporarily stuck on the spinning ride, with some left traumatized. The footage has gone viral with thousands of TikTok users voicing their thoughts on the incident. Operators were said to have followed the protocols, which led to the park's maintenance. It's always a guy that looks like that running these rides. Look at him the with the blue shirt, no disheveled. Looks reported, like he was drinking the night before. You know it too. I'm not lying. The attraction. This is why I don't go to these things. Like it's always that guy. Uh, he's always got the red face. He looks like he may have missed a bolt or two on the ride. And they're saying it's a glitch, but I don't know how. Anyways, anyways, I the guy in the beginning of the video had a point, though, is they're not a plug like just unplug it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't let my kids ride carnival rides. And my mom thinks I'm a freak of nature for that because she's like, well, you grew up riding them and you're fine. No, I I've seen too many horror stories. Um, the people have died on them, and it is. It's always the shadiest people running the rides. Yeah, we we don't do those rides. We'll, we'll do the Universal Studios at Disney, the ones where they do like safety checks before they run the ride every morning. Um, this was an interesting interesting trip. Um, I'm glad that I got footage of uh, them wrapping up the scene. 
Uh, I hope folks leave Asa alone. Um, I know there'll be more on this one. I, I Oh, we want to talk brief. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Eva, where are you going? Hey, I, we need like a little cute thing. We got, we're missing stuff. We got, we got a couple things with True Crime. We got, a, we got a lawsuit, right? Ryan Upchurch got involved in that Kylie Rodney case. And he's now getting sued by the family of Kylie Rodney. You'll get Eva's face because she is a huge country fan. She loves hot dogs, her country music, canned beans, and Ryan Upchurch. Like, how dare them? But the family of Kylie Rodney suing him for all the bullshit that went down for his accus accusations during that. Um, we've already talked about Asa being harassed. Uh, this one is big. Uh, Papa Roger uh, apparently came back online. I have video of how this went down. Um, but the account is reactivated. So you can see here you can go I, I, I presume you can still go uh, at this late of an hour but uh you can go to the posts that uh were left in the university of idaho murders uh, case discussion group uh you can now click on his name her name um and it will go to the reactivated account um we know that you can't troll this right you anyone can go in and and create a new facebook account and call themselves papa roger is that iranian or italian flag anyone it's a good question. That looks like it's Iranian. That may be the Iranian flag. Um, that'd be interesting because I'm half Iranian. Are they giving me the finger? I don't know. But anyways, um, so you can click on the account and it's, it's active and you know it's not an imposter uh, because each Facebook account has a unique numeric ID um, that's associated with it. So oh, yeah, anyone here can go create a new account, but you wouldn't be able to click on the account and it'd lead you to this. Um, is it an Iranian flag? Ay, ay, ay. I think Papa Roger, I think that's a nod to me, Eva. He knows you've been looking for him. She, I'm sorry. She knows that you've been looking for mm. him. That's interesting. I caught that earlier, but I was so caught up doing content. But um, folks can see here for themselves. But that's interesting because Dateline NBC, News Nation, and every other news affiliate ran with this. Uh, and now the account's back. Uh, it's not Brian in jail, right? Um, and there's some interesting stuff going on with that case. He has filed motions to get rid of this case completely, citing that the grand jury was done inappropriately and they were misled. But um, this is big news because this has been, I told you I wasn't stopping until I found Papa. They knew I was onto them. And that's why they put the Iranian flag there with the finger in the middle because they knew how close I was, Eva. <laughs> You've been searching hard for Papa, so. Um, or this or, was just or wild. Just, just think about this, or think about this. I'm so confident that it wasn't Brian because it was me. How how amazing would that be? If I found out that you were Papa this whole time, I really, I don't know what I'd do. I'd have to be away from you for a few days to process it, honestly, because I would be so mad. Just for the rabbit holes that I went down, the time wasted trying to disprove just for them to just pop up randomly. And I said that we said that when we were searching in here one day, we spent we wasted an entire day. We didn't move. We were both at our laptops all day. And I'm like, you know, could you just like the person sees everybody in a frenzy on the Internet, like just a single post like. Hey, it wasn't Brian Koberger, it was me, haha, ha. and then disappear again. I don't care. And then now, after all this time, just well, that's where I was actually. I had all that footage you saw of New York and stock footage. I actually went to Carmel to take care of that school budget. Uh, and I figured now's the time uh, to come out. So here I am. <laughs> uh, follow me on Facebook, guys, Papa Roger. Uh, I'll be updating you guys shortly with what's going on there. Um, I love you all. Thanks for following. I hope you guys feel like you guys uh, were a part of the trip and uh, got to see the scene scenes uh, a little better. Um, what is this? <laughs> Eva with the graphics always coming in clutch with the graphics. Um, yeah, there. I mean, there's no you can't. It's data. Click on the link, guys. You guys can go see for yourself. I love you guys. Keep facing the light. Tomorrow Sunday service, for those that don't know what that is, just a day of bollocks. Dank memes, inappropriate humor. Um, 
we're going to get back to a regular normal schedule with, uh, I'm not going to be traveling next week. I'm excited. I'm going to be, I took the kids to the water park today. I was so excited. I'm like, I just, I don't want to be in a car anymore. I want to go in water. So let Eva had some quiet time all by herself. Took the kids out, maybe do the same tomorrow or Monday. We have season passes there. Um, and then stuff looks like it's going to ramp up with this Colbert and stuff. And we actually have a birthday party tomorrow. Like your mom says, what's this wee business? Is that a mouse in your pocket? It's for the baby. My nephew's birthday is tomorrow. Um, he just turned two this week. So we were doing, it's a pool party though. It's water. There's water involved. Is it and there at the trailer park? No. no, it's at a real pool. <laughs> what do you mean a real pool? Like, is this a house I've been to or? Uh, yes. Uh, grandpa's house. Aunt Melanie and Grandpa's house. Uh, okay. Right. Is Mima's going though, right? Oh, oh we got to check in with Mima. Hello. Mima. What's up? It's the nerdy attic. How are you? I, I'm the same as I was yesterday. Listen, you're live, uh, mom. You're no. Uh, listen, um, are you going to this pool party tomorrow? What do you know about it? I'm running the shindig. What do you mean? Are there going to be fire? Uh, what do you, what, what's the, like, give me some. No, there will not be any goddamn fireworks. It's a pool party. How do you, We're going to go out there, play cornhole and swim. Corn what now? Cornhole. What's cornhole? You don't know what cornhole is? You northern ass goddamn idiot. You don't know what cornhole is? It's fucking cornhole. My ass some southern piece if you don't know what that is. Jesus. Sorry, you people up in the snow don't know how to play good games. Is that like Marco Polo? No. It's not. <laughs> it's a beanbag game. Well, I. Except for it's not beans, it's corn. Like a hacky sack? I used to hacky sack. Corn bags. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, hacky you can, sack? Yeah, you can you can hacky sack with the cornhole bag. You can try it. Mm. Well, I hope you have some decent fireworks because often we'll be disappointed. We told her that you're We will not have any fireworks. We already, we already told her. Your granddaughter thinks there's just going to be fireworks. I am there. the fireworks. All right. Well, I hope you get some rest tonight. And let me, one more question, Mima. Are you making big boy moves? That's what I'm talking about. Have a good night. I love you. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone, have a good night. We love you. Uh, be kind to each other. Face the light. And we will see everyone tomorrow. Good night, everybody. We love you. Thanks for being here with us.